Feng Kuzeli saw the mute queen standing behind a tree on the bank of the stream. Feng Kuzeli was a bit stunned to find her at an unexpected place at an unexpected time. She knew that the mute queen did not like to see strangers. Shandan A. Muthan is in the boat, maybe Anta will run away when she sees him. The moment the thought crossed her mind, her aunt started running. Bungaze Lai suddenly jumped from the stream to the bank of the stream and looked up on the hill. She noticed the ant hiding in the thick forest a short distance away. In the meantime, Sinthan A. Muthan also jumped on the bank and climbed up the hill and reached the place where Pungazay Lai was standing. Pungazla! Pungazla! Who stood here a moment ago? He asked. Don't you know, Amuda? I don't know for sure. Maybe. Yes, it's my aunt. It's your great aunt you thought was dead. Yes, it seemed as though mother had a bit of a jar. Just don't say anything. Little aunt and great aunt have nothing in common in appearance, no resemblance in character. Where is the house-tied cow? Where is the lioness who roams about at random? Well, let it be, why did the lion queen run away when she saw you? Punguzali smiled and said, she ran away seeing you. She doesn't like to see strangers. Am I not a stranger? Anta doesn't know that. She won't run away from you if she finds out. But before she finds out, she'll be very hesitant. Pungujali. What are you going to do now? I'm going to find Auntie. Shall I come too? What for? Just to get to know Pariyama in person. Why do you need to know great-grandmother? Sendan A. Muthan was eager to see his grandmother as he knew a little about his grandmother's past history from Pungazali. He also had a wish that Puriyama might help change Pungazali's mind from her party. There are many reasons, but do you want a reason for wanting to know great-grandmother, or what? He said. Pungazali thought for a while and said, All right come on. Let's go. If we take you too, it will be a bit of an effort to catch Pariyama. But who lets go? Let's tie up the boat here and leave. She said. In the same way, the boat was hidden under a Thalamha bush and the two of them went towards Kodi Karu forest. While walking, Sendan A. Muthan said, Punguzali. Didn't you say that Pariyama is in Sri Lankan island or Buddha island? He said. Yes. Sometimes she is on the island of Ceylon and sometimes on the island of the trolls. Do you come here often? No, she rarely comes. If I don't go and see her for a long time. Did she just come to see you? Looks like she's here for a different purpose this time. What else is the matter? Perhaps she has come to find out if her noble son has drowned in the sea, or if he has escaped and reached the shore. Did not the ant know that the whirlwind hit the sea after the prince sailed away? Is Aromas Hivarman her illegitimate son? Then who is Pariyama's own son? That's what I don't know, if not one day I'm going to find out and find out. Is the native son alive, or is he dead? Yeah, he might be dead, who knows? Punghuali said. After a while, he said, Amuda. You saw your aunt. You said that your mother's face was beautiful, did you remember anyone else's face? She asked. It seems to remember something. It's not clear. It's like it's hidden by a cloud. Have you seen Ilayarani of Pavur often? Sometimes Parthadundu yes. After you say whose face it looks like. It's Nandini Devi's face. It's amazing. How could that have happened? Pungujali. How did you find that resemblance? I often see my aunt. I saw the Isla Irani of Pavur a few days ago in this same Kadakare. I immediately recognized the similarity of her facial expressions. What could be the reason? That's what I'm going to find out one day. I'm going to ask my aunt about it when I see her today. Aunt is dumb? How can you talk to her? Don't you talk to your mother? Amuta. It's been a habit since birth to speak with a jar. Even so, he had a hard time talking about something new. Great aunt and I will talk like that with a jar. Let's draw pictures and show what a jar can't talk about. 
How difficult is it that both the sister and the younger brother were born mute in the same family? How sad it must have been for those who adopted them. Not only that, at a young age, the older sister and younger brother would fight incessantly. That's why Patanar took only the great aunt and settled on the island of the giants. The grandfather was very fond of the great aunt. Someone Josian said that the child has the power to become a queen when the child is born. So when he found out that the child was mute, his agony was too much. Talking like this they entered the forest. For a long time the wandering mute queen could not be found. Amatha. Anta can't be found because you are with me. She hides on purpose when she sees you. That's all my luck, I thought. Nothing happens. Shall I go? How will you go? I have to take you out of this forest. At this moment a wondrous voice came from the forest, which did not even appear to be a human voice, the voice of animals did not appear. The sound was heard two or three times. A few deer ran towards the direction of the sound. Punghuali paused and thought. Amuda. Follow me without making a sound. She said. Both of them slowly walked towards the direction of the voice. After a while they saw a wonderful sight. The mute queen was leaning against the base of a tree. She was holding some of the young ones in her hand. Around her stood seven or eight beautiful deer. They competed to eat the shoots from her hand. A small fawn was sitting on her shoulder and was looking at her face with its tiny beautiful eyes. Punghuali and Amudan stood motionless for a while seeing this strange sight. At first it was the fawn on the dumb queen's shoulder that saw them. When he saw it, he jumped down from his shoulder. The other deer also saw them. All the deer stood ready to pounce if they approached. Then the mute queen also saw them. Another strange sound came from her throat. Hearing that, all the deer jumped and ran away. Ant doesn't know only the language of humans. She knows the language of animals very well, Punguzali said and signaled to the dumb queen. The dumb queen didn't run away this time. She looked at the flower pot and signaled back. As Pungujali approached, the dumb queen hugged her and hugged her. Sendan Amuthan was standing a little distance away. Aunt and daughter in law spoke in hushed tones for some time. Then Punguzali called Amudan to come near. The dumb queen looked him up and down a few times and then laid her hand on his head for a while in the act of blessing. Then she took her hand from his head and dragged him by the hand. All three came to the river bank. The dumb queen sat there and signaled to Funguzali to come and go. Punguzali said, Come. Amuda. Let's go home, Aunt it won't come. Let's bring food here. Both went towards the lighthouse. Flower. What are you telling me? Amuthan asked. I had an idea to come with you to Tanjore. That is not possible now. Auntie wants to see her wealthy son. So I have another trip to Nagaipata. If you come with her, Auntie will run and disappear at once. I can't get the details from her that I need to know. Sendan Amuthan sighed and said that's all I've given, so I'll bid you farewell now. He said. No, no. Come home, eat and say goodbye to your uncle and others. Otherwise, everyone will come to fight with me. At another place on the way they saw a woman and a man talking under the cover of a bush. Aha! It looks like Anira Camel. The secret talks are still not over. Who are the people who have come now? Are they the Pandian spies? Anyone else? Punguzali said to herself. Rakamal came out from the bush. She was a little startled when she saw the flower pot. But she quickly hid it and came closer to them. Punguzali. Where have you been lost all these days? Your father and brother are very worried. She said. Why worry? This is the first time I've ever left home. Didn't you take your aunt and son with you this time? I'm worried that you will get married without telling anyone. Sister. How many times have I told you not to talk to me like this? Have you spoken like this again? No girl. No. What is it to me if you marry your aunt's son? What is it to me if you marry the king's son? 
Your great aunt came from Sri Lanka looking for you. Have you seen her? She said. No, I haven't seen it yet, said Punguzali. When Sendan got a chance to speak to Amutha alone before joining the house, he said, Amutha. Be careful. Annie is with the conspirators of Pandya country. She will tear your mouth and don't answer anything. She said. I will remain mute for a while longer here, said Santhan Amuthan. That afternoon Punguzali again directed her stream towards Nagaipatanam. A mute queen was sitting in the boat. Pungujali always felt at ease when he was near the mute queen. Their like-minded souls give each other such peace. But this time there was no such relief in the mind of Bungazali. She often remembered how Pani had been taken unconscious at the same place a few days before. When she thought that she had gone through so much trouble just to marry that Rajakumar to another Rajakumari, she felt a shrinking pain in her heart. She was heartbroken when she thought that Sendan had sent Amuthan away as if he had grabbed him and pushed him to go to town. Apart from these thoughts, the warning given by her father Tyaga Vidangakaryar that day kept coming to mind. Child! It would be good if you could control your movements a little. Some new people are coming here. I don't know why. There are some conspiracies going on in the kingdom. Don't get caught up in them. Our family is forever indebted to the royal family of the Chola clan. Don't forget this," said her father. When he considered the secret activities of his sister-in-law along with his father's warning, Pungazali felt an unimaginable horror. Perhaps those new men have come looking for him. Will they try to find Pani Selvan's whereabouts by following him? How big a crime can it be if it comes out through him? The sounds of rustling in the forest along the banks of the stream could add to Pung J. Lai's agitation. The wind did not blow then, it was as if the eight directions were conspiring to hold back the wind. So what is the reason for the commotion in the river Rhine forests? All this trouble was nothing to the mute queen. She has no hearing and therefore does not hear the noise. Can't even ask her for an opinion on it. But the mute queen has some other powers too. With the help of her sixth sense, she perceives things that cannot be seen by the eyes or heard by the ears. Is there no danger that she doesn't know is too close to her? What is this? Do you often look anxiously at the stream bank? Is there really any danger coming? The reason for Aunt Ode Carey's frequent visits soon became clear. It was supposed to relieve Pungujali's anxiety. At one place, five or six deer stood between the bushes on the banks of the stream, knowingly or unknowingly, peering at the boat. No, didn't see the boat. They saw the dumb queen. Aha! There are no other animals in the world as beautiful as deer. God who created the deer did not know why he created the humans. Sandalwood people. Are there people who hunt and kill such beautiful animals? At the sight of the deer, and thinking of their beauty, the arms of the wondrous gardener stopped paddling, the boat stopped. A strange sound came from the mute queen's throat. It was not like the voice heard that morning. There was a mixture of horror and alarm. Hearing this, the deer also got scared and started running back. At the same moment, an arrow from somewhere hidden hit a deer. The arrow-stitched deer let out a sad howl. The mute queen leapt from the boat ashore and ran towards the wounded deer. As she approached the deer, there was a rustling in the bushes on all sides. In the next few seconds seven or eight people came and surrounded her. Many of them had weapons in hand. At a little distance, Roximal, who had brought them as a guide, was also seen. The mute queen tried to flee, could not knowing that running away was impossible, the mute queen stood idly by. Two men approached and tied her hands with ropes. All this happened in a few seconds while Pungujali was watching. On learning that the dumb queen's hands were being tied with a rope, Pungjali jumped out of the boat and ran screaming. She brought the paddle from her hand. Five or six of those who were standing around the dumb queen ran towards Pungujali. They grabbed her and dragged her to the boat and tied her tightly with a rope. Then they went back, they disappeared within a few seconds, taking with them the mute queen who had accompanied them.